see in center of arch you could say square beam is coming out on that basis you could say artist copied minor things very carefully and faithfully even to the extent of locking system on that basis you could say the artist had very good knowledge of sound engineering acoustic and at place of stupa the big cross along the statue of jesus christ so many believe that idea of church they took it from ajanta after that they sent a dancer to seduce him in spite of base efforts by their enemies they couldn't succeed and he is still meditating front of queue number 12 this cave is buddhist and this cave is a very good example of rock cut architecture queue number 16 we saw that was cut out monolith this is cut in monolith okay locals they call this as tintal three story cave and whenever we construct a temple or house in first story we had to have big size pillar second still smaller third was still smaller same thing they did here pillars are tapering towards end at the time they didn't had any geometrical instruments still you see all pillars are in same line if you stand in front of one pillar you can't see behind pillars this proves that all pillars are in same line distance between two pillars just go anywhere and count it you'll find same distance between two pillars and whenever we have cement concrete structure we have to give collar like structures above pillars collar like structures above pillars only for decoration and not for support buddhist monks they were using these caves as religious institutions in day time for teaching learn uh, and uh, teaching learning and night days to stay here this was something a university come hostel and buddhist monks used to travel all over india propagating religion but during four months of monsoon known as chatur masa they are supposed to live at some place so these were chatur masa residents of buddhist monks it's a vihara or monastery ye bhi sabhi same hi hai buddhist ke aj university wow Now we're in front of cave number ten. This cave again Buddhist. And you know Buddhism was started by Gautama or Siddhartha in 500 BC. And like most of religions, Buddhism was divided in four major sects: Hinayana, Mahayana, Zen Buddhism. and zen shinto buddhism jain buddhism jain sindhism we are listening shinto zen shinto gautama or siddhartha founded hinayana sect hin means smaller yana means vehicle smaller vehicle and believers of hinayana worship relics of buddha or buddhist monk such as hair tooth bone ashes footprints in sri lanka we have one place Known as Candy, the tooth of Buddha still over there, and that tooth was taken by Emperor Ashoka's daughter Sangamitra. She took that tooth in a hairdo and she took it to Sri Lanka. Candy. Every every year on Bodh Purnima, big ceremony takes place there. And from Candy, this Hinayana sect spread to all Southeast Asia. That is Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia. Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia and Singapore. In second century AD another sect known as Mahayana came into existence. Maha means big, yana means vehicle, bigger vehicle. And believers of Mahayana worship Buddha's image, Buddha's idol. In fifth century AD from India, Buddhism migrated to different countries. That is Sikkim, Bhutan, Nepal, Tibet, China and Mongolia. 
that had got mixed with local religion known as Zen. There we have Zen Buddhism, that's what Dalai Lama follows. In 6th century AD from China, via Korea and Taiwan, Buddhism migrated to Japan. In Japan it got mixed with local religion known as Shinto. In Japan we have Zen Shinto Buddhism. At present there are 14 countries all over the world where Buddhism is main religion. But it was out from India of a Buddha or Buddhism itself was born. During period of Ashoka, two-third India was Buddhist. So naturally Hindu priests were worried. Things goes on like that, Hinduism will be totally wiped out. To prevent that, Shankaracharya made some amendments in Hindu religion. Those who left Hinduism and joined Buddhism, he invited them back, known as purification, Shuddhikaran. That was going on approximately for 500 years. As I told you, in 13th century AD, India was attacked by Aladdin Khilji. His general Malik Kafur was very cruel. And one of his cousin, Bakhtiar Khilji, he attacked Nalanda University, burned Nalanda University, slaughtered all Buddhist monks. As a result, they ran away to Sikkim, Bhutan, Nepal, and Tibet, and that was the end of Buddhism in India. Same way, we had two types of Buddhist caves one is Vihara, other is Chaitya. Cave number 12 we saw was a Vihara or monastery. And this cave number 10 is Mahayana sect Chaitya, Mahayana sect prayer hall. The locals, they call this cave as Vishwakarma cave, carpenter's workshop, carpenter's hut. Because carpenters worship Vishwakarma as god of architecture. And this cave is nothing but imitation of Buddhist architecture. That's why they call it as Vishwakarma cave. Let's come this side. Come this side. See, whenever we construct a temple or house, we have to have wooden rafters and beams for purpose of support. See upon ceiling. Rafters and beams in stone only for decoration and not for support. See that arch, that window is known as Chaitya Arch, Chaiti Arch, symbol of wealth and prosperity. And as Buddha had his enlightenment under people tree, shape of, shape of arch is like people leaf having folds. And as that arch symbolizes prosperity, you see flying figures with flowers and garlands to worship that arch. See these three figures or these three, these two women are Apsaras and middle one is Kinnar, that is transgender. <laughs> On that basis you could say at that time transgender had very good social status, they are upon a facade. And as that arch symbolizes prosperity, most of government of India buildings, they copy that arch. For example, Vigyan Bhani in New Delhi, our railway station, central bus stand, every year you find that arch. See, in center of arch, you could say square beam is coming out and pin is fixed there. Locking pin, you see cross in center. On that basis, you could say artist copied minor things very carefully and faithfully to the extent of locking system. See, right in corner, you see temple memory. This is a Nagara Shaili, North Indian Aryan style. Left hand side, another temple memory. This is South Indian Dravidian style. So this cave is combination of North Indian architecture and South Indian architecture. Or more you could say Aryan architecture and Dravidian architecture. Up on top, you see happy love-making couples with kids. These are known as the Mithuna couples. And concept of Mithuna couple is basically a Hindu concept. So this is Hindu influence on Buddhist cave. Middle row again, happy couples. Last line you see, horses, elephants, antelopes. So special of this cave, facade. Front portion is very well decorated, imitation of wooden architecture. Let's go inside. Green is copper sulfate, white is gypsum calcium, and red is iron. Natural mineral layers. That's it. Also, is yes, white, it's calcium. And this one is gypsum. Copper sulfate. Copper sulfate, green one. Yeah. And see this. Ah, this is Greek key. And this is Greek lock. This is Greek influence. 
and here you see this chin design this is from middle east there's a pot with flowers flower table uh, table floor pot and there is a press for cushion and vertical fashion this is greek and roman influence this you'll find in south bombay goa chennai kerala churches have this type of vertical fashions this is greek and roman influence wow <clears throat> now look at that big structure is known as stupa yes it is object of worship yeah but this stupa is not real stupa it is only representation of stupa a real stupa is made in sanchi and sarnath another real stupa is in sri lanka candy abo set up a stupa they used to have another wooden cascade in that cascade they used to have relics of buddha or buddhist monk instead of buddha's image they used to worship that stupa but as this could belong to mahana set see buddha statue here is a mix of mahini and maya no 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 this is when you have stupa it is a prayer hall but with the statue it is mahana see jashar is hand this is dharma chakra pravartan mudra teaching or preaching pose is trying to convince point like 1 2 3 preaching of buddhism see on shoulder see piece of cloth known as chiva sitting on lion throat figure on left is a bodhi sattva padma pan padma is a lotus flower pan in his hand he is holding a lotus flower in his hand that is padma pan figure on right is bodhi sattva vajra pan holding a vajra so vajra pan on that arch flying couples with flowers and garlands to worship that buddha and he shown under bodhi tree or people tree under which buddha had his enlightenment upon ceiling imitation of wooden rafters and beams in stone dome shaped water roof like a church like a cathedral and many historians believe that idea of church they took it from ajanta q number 10 q number 10 or ajanta is 200 bc yes this dome shaped water roof is also compared with lower portion of boat back of elephant or like our chest rib thoracic rib and there you have cobra couples cobra king under canopy of cobra hoods and queen with garden below that buddha figure in preaching pose on either side two attendants holding flags below that here dwarfs playing on their music and instruments a procession is carried look at that gallery is known as music gallery and there they used to sing their prayers and used to play on their musical instruments usually churches have this type of gallery where they play symphony and these two aisles two sides one here one is there and middle portion is known as nave and at place of stupa the big cross along the statue of jesus christ so many believe that idea of church they took it from ajanta q number 10 and this is a chaitya or prayer hall so give me one minute i will have same type of prayers which they used to sing at the time if you want you can record it yeah knowledge of sound engineering acoustic they knew to cut in particular angle how then it did easy for eco yeah ah it's Take give peace when you're singing exactly <laughs> energy peace energy yeah bhai guide hone ka ye fayda hai 
आपको ना पूरा डिटेल मिलता है और जब उन्होंने प्रेयर की जैसे पुराने टाइम में की जाती थी साउंड इंजीनियरिंग की हो माई गॉड वो वाला ना एक बड़ा पीस और एनर्जी दे रहा था वो साउंड इंजीनियरिंग उसके अकॉर्डिंग डिजाइन करना हो गॉड कितना टफ था और वो ये सेम आर्किटेक्ट मैंने अजंता में देखा था जो 200 हंड्रेड पीसी में जो केव तैयार हुआ था ये क्यों इनकम्प्लीट है शायद उन्होंने जो मेरे को बताया था कल कि दो तरह के स्टोन होते हैं एक कच्चा और एक पक्का कच्चे में उन्होंने रोक दिया गया था काम शायद ऐसा कुछ हो सकता है इसमें या नहीं भी फॉर महावीर in 500 bc yes. same period as that of buddhism okay almost same time same same yes parallel okay many historians believe that buddha attended some of sermons of mahavira but in general religion there is a part of self torture which buddha didn't like it then he started his own religion yeah i also said that when someone who became wanted to become saint they have to yes, pick pluck hairs you pluck hairs pluck hair yes yeah that's that is known as a kesha locha samaro every year that the kosh kesha samar you have to look hair from face and all that you know otherwise basic principles of buddhism and jainism is same both follow non violence detachment honesty but jains follow extreme non violence yeah that means jains do not eat anything which is grown underground that is no potato onion garlic ginger carrot radish anything which is grown on the ground they believe that it contains microorganisms and they don't want to kill microorganisms so they don't eat anything which is grown on the ground jain religion is so difficult to follow and that is reason you know as i to as i told you there are 14 countries all over the world where we have buddhism jainism couldn't go out of india even in india there are less than half percent it's so jain religion is so difficult to follow do they are less in number but they are very rich they are in banking they are in trade they are in jewelry they are in diamond so there goes a famous joke american economy is controlled by jews indian economy is controlled by jains they are so rich and jain religion is divided in two major sects digambara and shwetambara digambara sect was the original one shwetambara came later on mahavira founded digambara sect Shwetambara sect saints wear white clothes. Shwet means white, Ambar means clothes. Saints have white clothes. Digambaras are naked. Caves here are dedicated to Digambara sect. Find all nude statues here. Because you know, Jainism was founded by Mahavira in Bihar, and when Jain monks tried to enter into South India for propagation of religion, they were opposed by Shaivites. South India was ruled by Shaivites. They said, "We won't allow you naked. Start wearing clothes." and then they started wearing white clothes shwet means white ambar means clothes shwet ambar that's how another sect shwet ambar came into existence but caves here dedicated to their digambara sect all nude statues here jains do not believe in god they believe only in tirthankara saints and some of them say that mahavira was 24th tirthankara 24th saint 
Jains believe that, but as far as history and archaeology goes, they treat Mahavira as founder of Jain religion. As compared to Hindu and Buddhist group of caves, Jain caves are more decorated. Number one, they belong to a later period, 11th century AD. And as I told you, most of Jains are rich, they donated more for caves, it's more decorated. Then we have only five figures. In Santam Sanctuary, we have Mahavira, naked, is shown under three umbrellas. Number of umbrella is status symbol. And lion is symbol of Mahavira, sitting on lion throne. Left hand side, you'll find Parshanath under canopy of cobra hoods, 23rd Tirthankara. Right hand side is Gomteshwar or Bahubali under creepers. Once he was meditating, he meditated for 12 long years. In the meantime, creepers grew, grew around his body and surrounded by wild animals. 200 kilometers from Bangalore, we have one place known as Shravan Belgoda. There we have a big statue of Shra, uh, Bahubali or Gomteshwara. And as he was meditating for 12 years, every 12 years, big ceremony takes place there. Whole statue is washed with milk and lotus petals. Three years back with the festival, you have to wait another nine years. Upon sailing in number 32, you'll find inverted lotus symbol of purity. Now we are in Jain Kyo. These four are in Jain Kyo. And there are more design and Murti Kala. And this cave is very similar to cave number 16 and that's why they are also called this mini Kailash. There were two pillars, there we have only one pillar. There we have two elephants, there we have only one elephant. In the middle we had big chariot, there is a small chariot. Inside we have statue of Mahavira, founder of General Jain. It has got four openings, one, two, three, four because he's keeping eye on all directions and that's why he's also known as Sarvadnya, one who knows everything. Let's go inside. And here is Pashwana under canopy of cobra hoods. He's under one umbrella. On his backside, see coils of cobra. Standing on Lotus Tower. A follower couple with folded hands. His enemies are trying to scare him. Look at that fellow riding a lion with a dagger. He is having a spear. He is holding a big stone. He is riding on water buffalo with a dagger. He is again having a dagger. Look at their faces, scary. And they are all trying to scare him. In spite of that, his face is very peaceful, calm and quiet, meditating. After that, they send a dancer to seduce him. In spite of best efforts by their enemies, they couldn't succeed and he's still meditating. And here is Matangya. As I told you, Jains do not believe in God. They believe only in angels. He is riding on an elephant. And his pot belly symbolizes that, represents prosperity, wealth. Because in all religions, Hindu, Jain, Buddhist, or really symbolizes that. The jewelry is beautiful, look at his necklace. Yeah, all are so amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, the earrings, armlet, vest belt, and especially crown. Crown is very well decorated. Yes. Here is Siddhaika riding on a lion. A kid on her lap which is damaged indicates that she represents fertility. And generally it is believed that prosperity and fertility go together. Then you have prosperity, then you have fertility. Here again, jewelry is beautiful. Look at her necklace, earring, arm belt, vest belt, anklet. This is very typically South Indian, bell shaped, folds of sari, bells here, and chain hair style. Very typical South Indian. Judah or Chumbal style. And see that pillow, see lines on that pillow. And I think you prosperity and fertility go together. So then we have prosperity, then we have fertility. See in Sanctum Sanctorum, this is Mahavira. 
If you look at face of Buddha and Mahavira, you cannot differentiate which one is Buddha and which one is Mahavira. Because Buddha and Mahavira both existed in 500 BC and caves were excavated from 2nd century BC onwards. That means 300 years after their death. None of artists ever saw Buddha or Mahavira. Your Buddha's face and Mahavira's face is imaginary. Only way you could differentiate Buddha from Mahavira. Buddha has got piece of cloth, chiver on his shoulder, dhoti, while Mahavira is always naked, sitting on lotus flower. And lion is symbol of Mahavira. Buddha's symbol is antelope, rotating wheel and two antelopes. He is shown under three umbrellas, number of umbrellas, status symbol. On either side, two attendants holding flags to keep flies away. Here is Bhomteshwar or Bahubali. As I told you, he was meditating for 12 years. See, long hairs. Creepers grew around his body and surrounded by wild animals. You see, antelopes. That antelope is leaning in front of him. A follower couple with folded hands. Two lady attendants. Flying couples with garland and flowers to worship. He is under one umbrella by Maharaj Bhatt three. Two hundred kilometers from Bangalore, there is a place known as Shravan Balagoda. There we have big statue of Saint Gondeshwara. Total height is fifty-eight feet, supposed to be the tallest in India. And as I told you, he was meditating for twelve years. Every twelve years, big ceremony takes place there. Whole statue is washed with milk and lotus petals. Saint Gondeshwara Bhatt. There is a happy love-making couple, Mithuna couple. Mm. This is a Hindu influence on Jain cave. This is a Parshvanatha under canopy of cobra hoods. Mm. A religious ceremony is going on and war civil. Upon ceiling, original paintings of 11th century AD, very much damaged. Okay. On either side, two Dwarpalas. See, jewelry, necklace, earring, arm belt, waist belt very intricately carved. Giant caves are known for jewelry, more decorated. Mm. Here sits the same arch, Chaiti arch, and lion head known as Kirti Mukha. So you could say this is a, a Buddhist influence on Jain cave. So this is a Jain cave. On Jain cave you see Hindu and Buddhist influence that shows tolerance. Up there we have same panels repeated, much of bigger size. Right side you'll find Siddhaika riding on a lioness, opposite Matangya on elephant, in sanctum sanctum of Mahavira, right side Parshanath and Gomteshwara, up on ceiling of inverted lotus. Elephant corner there is a door, through the door you could move to this cave, same panels repeated. Again right hand another door, move to another cave. Three caves are interconnected and you come out from other side, I'll be there. Wow, dead side. यहाँ पे तो मूर्ति कला का भंडार है ये जगह है वन Because flowers, monkey, fruits, are eating, playing. Parrot. Or we don't know who is who. What a design. Wow. This is like I don't know where I am. Where I am in the art gallery, where I am in the museum. That is also very small. 
इतनी डिटेलिंग हद से ज़्यादा ये देखो और ये ज्वेलरी का डिजाइन आप पत्थर को ऊपर से नीचे काटा गया और इतने करीने से यो इनके एक्सप्रेशन देखो क्या वाओ इट्स अमेजिंग क्या यहाँ पे भी डिजाइन है अब सोचने वाली बात है मेरा हाथ नहीं पहुंच रहा वहां पे उन्होंने कटिंग कैसे की हुई इधर यहाँ पे तो हमारा कटिंग करा इधर कटिंग करना चारों तरफ दीवार पे बहुत ही प्यारी पेंटिंग है मैं सबको दिखा ही नहीं सकता इतना बड़ा व्लॉग हो जाएगा हद से ज्यादा ऑलरेडी बहुत बड़ा हो गया क्या वाह ऊपर की पेंटिंग सब खत्म हो चुकी है टाइम के अनुसार ऊपर पेंटिंग थी वाह क्या है कुदरत का करिश्मा नहीं इंसान का करिश्मा हमारे पूर्वजों का मैं सेकंड केव में यहीं से जा सकता हूं ऐसे हर जगह क्या तकड़ी नक्काशी की गई है कुछ भी जगह खाली नहीं छड़ी है हर जगह पे डिजाइन है हर जगह पूरी कारीगरी है ये फिर एक में क्या फाओ सेम आर्किटेक्ट बट इसमें पत्थर थोड़ा छोटा है उसमें दीवार वाल छोटी बड़ी थी इसमें छोटी है बट ऑलमोस्ट सेम है मैं जा रहा हूँ जैन के में ये सब कनेक्टेड है इंटर कनेक्टेड है ये लास्ट की है एलोरा की ये बिल्कुल अलग है यहाँ से इंटर कनेक्टेड है दूसरी जगह पे जाने के लिए इधर से जा सकते हैं मैं ज्यादा कुछ नहीं दिखा सकता हूँ ब्लॉग में और इतना बड़ा हो चुका है ऑलरेडी मुझे कटिंग करके बहुत छोटा करना पड़ेगा अभी कुछ रह गया है पर है है ओके ये हिंदू क्यों Wow. Uh, you come out from other side, the beautiful valley, okay. and from the twenty uh, twenty nine, twenty uh eight, -huh. and you go walk up to the number sixteen. Okay. Yeah, I will walk. Yeah, I will walk. Okay. And this is the same repetition, the same statue, the same. Just the Shiva in the other form is showing every temple, every cave. खुदा जाने कैसे बनाए होंगे ये सब इतना बड़ा के वो ऐसा लग रहा है थ्री डी थ्री डी मूवी देख रहे हो हर चीज इतने बारीकी कारीने से उभारी गई है फ्रंट बैक उसके पीछे मूर्ति उसके पीछे कुछ और डिजाइन ये नीचे जाने का रास्ता है पहले में इधर से दूसरी तरफ जाने का रास्ता है आगे के में तो मैं वापस आता हूँ नीचे ये हैवन का रास्ता रेनी सीजन में यहाँ बहुत बड़ा वाटरफॉल होता है तो उसके पीछे से जाओ 
तो रेनी सी दोबारा ना पड़ेगा क्या अजंता के भी ऐसी थी अलोरा भी ऐसी ये ऑलमोस्ट सभी सेम डिजाइन है बाहर से बहुत सुंदर है अंदर से भी सुंदर है बट सेम डिजाइन है हम वापिस चलते हैं इक्कीस नंबर आ गए सोलह आने वाला है <laughs> हम वापिस सिक्स नंबर पे आ गए और अब वापिस ही का टाइम है तो टाइम बहुत हो चुका है अराउंड